I know, I know there's a fair amount of interest. I'm interested in he hearing a little bit more about the very early days with Tesla and how it came together. Um, yeah. Brother Kimball is here. I thought we'd bring him out. Sure. You guys could talk a little bit about it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you guys might get lucky tonight. <laughs> I notice you have a guitar. I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> we've got hats, we've got a guitar. But okay. I, I would guess there are a fair number of entrepreneurs here today and a fair number of people interested looking at Tesla, which now extraordinary, extraordinary success of it. Um, you know, how, how, did, how did this come together? I mean, when, you, and when you guys were looking at, I know famously, you know, you guys were, you were looking at problems you could solve. How did that, what do those conversations look like? Yeah, so the, uh, let's see, so I'm mean, I mean, talking to uh, Kimball, uh, thanks for coming on, um, about the things that I thought would be most important to work on for a long time, all the way back to college days. Um, and um, electric cars are something I've been interested in since I was, like, I don't know, 18, 19. Um, when do you first recall hearing me talk about electric cars? I'm just curious. First time was, well, you, you talked about it in the 90s a lot. Uh, we, 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 had, we used to brainstorm a lot randomly, even in, I think we were 20, 20 years old. And the first thing I remember us brainstorming was solving connectivity amongst doctors. Huh. And we were on a road trip from... That was Silicon, hopeless. Huh? <laughs> long time ago. We had a lot of doctors in the family, so we had the information. But the idea was really to solve that problem where we, from Silicon Valley to Philadelphia, brainstorming how you do it. This is before the internet, so we, we you know, in our minds, designing network computers, doctors talking. This has all happened, of course, over 25 years, but it's one of, the, it's one of the, that's sort of the first time I remember us really trying to solve a world problem, and unless it was a world problem that was really important, it just wasn't that interesting to us. Electric cars, uh, you talked about for a long time, but um, I remember walking into your house once, this is in probably 2002 or 2003, and you had these plans laid out that, uh, the team at Tesla had, or the, the earlier guys had, had basically said, you know, we're going to take this Lotus lease and we're going to convert it into an electric car. And, you know, we sat down and talked about it for a bit. And, and it wasn't so much that it, um, it could be done. I think we all believe it could be done. It was more just the attitude that it should be done. And then it went from there. Yeah, well, the, the, uh, the first internships that I had that were... Um, interesting, were on ultracapacitors for use in electric cars. So that's what, why I first came out to Silicon Valley in like 93 or 92 or something like that, was to work at a company called Pinnacle Research on advanced ultracapacitors with the idea that this could be a solution to the energy storage problem in electric vehicles. And then um, when I graduated from Penn, the, I was going to be doing a PhD at Stanford um, in material science and and, uh, and, and physics, um, trying to figure out if there's a, a way to, to, to solve for a, an ultra high density uh, solid state capacitor um, that would have enough range to uh, power an electric vehicle. So, um, so in fact, so I, that's that's a that's a '95, and then I wasn't sure. There's one of those things where. You could work in it for a long time and discover that there's no, actually no good solution. You, um, you could publish a paper and you um, get a PhD and all that, but it would be academic in its value. So in 95, I had a choice of either work on this energy storage system for electric vehicles or uh, try to play a role in building the internet. Um, but the internet stuff was happening right then and there. Um, whereas the electric, electric vehicle technology was going to progress slowly on its own um, whether I was there or not. So I thought, well, I'll put the grad studies on hold and do something um, to help build the internet or do something useful on the internet. Um, and that's um, when I talked to Kimball. And um, you were working in Canada at the time. Yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, I said, hey, why don't we try to do this, this company in Silicon Valley? Um, it's pretty cool. We built the. We we were, we we were the first to see maps in door-to-door -door direction. It had been built by a company, Naptech, but never been, never been on the internet. And it was it was so cool to be the first two humans to see it. You can draw a map, 
type in an address, yeah. get directions, things you probably all did about 50 times today each. Um, and we were the first to see that and put it on the internet, so it was really cool. Yeah, it was, a f it was the first maps and directions, yellow pages and white pages on the internet. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then we ended up helping bring a lot of publications online, so we're, as investors and customers, the New York Times Company, Knight Ritter, Hearst, and a number of others. Um, and, um, yeah, but I always wanted to get back to electric vehicles, because that, that was a primary interest of mine um, from undergrad and grad days. And, um, and so, uh, after Zip2, I still did one more internet company, because I thought Zip2 had not achieved its, its full potential. Um, we, we built this incredible technology, but it wasn't being used by the customers in the right way. Um, it was a bit like building, you know, um, F-22 fighter jets, and then and then you sell them to people, and they roll them down the hill at each other. And you're like, <laughs> that's really not the way to use it. Okay. Um, and I, I think that, that's where I decided you really want to go to the end consumer. If you've got great technology, you want to go all the way to the end consumer. Uh, don't sell it to, to to some bonehead legacy company that doesn't understand how to use it. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, so, with with X.com, which uh, became PayPal, uh, that's where that, that's where we, we try to do something significant with the with the internet, um, and and it, it got sort of part of the way towards its its objective. Um, after PayPal um, uh, went went public, and and they got bought by eBay in two thousand two. Uh, that actually f freed up uh, me and a bun bunch of other people to go and create companies. And I was sort of debating between either solar, electric car, or space. Um, I thought space was like the least likely to have somebody, the least likely to attract um, entrepreneurial talent. I thought like, like nobody is going to be crazy enough to do space, so I better do space. Um, so I started off with, with space first, um, and, um, and then about a year and a half later, in 2003, uh, I had lunch with uh, J.B. Straubel and Harold Rosen, and um, it was at uh, this like, fish restaurant in El Segundo. Um, and Harold Rosen uh, had been involved in space and electric vehicles, um, and, um, and J.B. was had just gotten out, just graduated from college and was working with him, and the conversation turned to electric vehicles um, because uh, Harold had done something called Rosen Motors, which was an, like an attempted EV startup. And I said, well, I've always been super interested in electric vehicles. I was going to do my PhD on um, in advanced energy, energy storage. <coughs> right. I was going to do grad studies on, on advanced energy storage techniques for electric vehicles. And, um, and so JV said, well, have you heard of this company called AC Propulsion? Because uh, they had created um, a, the T0 electric sports car as a prototype. Um, and I was like, wow, that's great. Uh, like lithium ion batteries had really achieved a level of energy density that could, um, for the first time could allow you to have a significant range in an electric car. Um, and they had a, a sports car that had zero to 60 in under four seconds, a 250 mile range, um, and it was pretty cool. Now it was just made of, a, it was just a kit car, so it didn't have a roof or airbags or a thermal control system, and it was extremely unreliable. It, it wasn't productized, but it was a proof of concept. Um, so I got the test drive from AC Propulsion, and I was like, wow, you guys should really commercialize this. This would show people what electric cars can do. And I tried for months to get AC propulsion to um, go into production with the T0. And like, they just were not interested in doing that. Um, amazingly, they wanted to do an electric Scion. Um, you know, like that boxy car? Um, but the problem is like, the electric Scion would, co would cost $70,000. Um, or you could build a sports car for $100,000. Okay, but like, nobody's going to buy the electric Scion. Um, but people might buy the electric sports car. Um, so uh, after 
pounding them for, for, for months, um, I finally said, like, look, if you guys are not going to commercialize the T0, would you mind if, if I did that? Um, they said, no, no, pro no problem, go ahead. It's like, great, so I'm going to do that with JV. And they said, but if you're, you're going uh, to um, if you're going to go and try to productize the T0, there's some other teams you should talk to that are also interested in doing that. Um, so that's where um, Martin Everhart, Mark Topping, and Ian Wright came in. Um, and uh, and that, I think that was probably the biggest mistake of my career, quite frankly. Um, I, the, I, I think whenever you think you can have your cake and eat it too, um, that's something you're, you're probably wrong. Um, so I thought I can keep running SpaceX. I'll dedicate 20% of my time to Tesla, and that'll be fine. Um, but actually, uh, it, it didn't. Um, things really melted down, went through hell. We had to recapitalize the company. And Kim was there seeing it in real time. Um, so Silicon Valley, accurate or not accurate? The, the show? <laughs> yeah. Um, the, it, it starts to get very accurate around, ep, around episode four. <laughs> so it took a few episodes to kind of get get grounded. The first few episodes struck me as Hollywood making fun of Hollywood's idea of Silicon Valley, which is like not, you know, not on point. But then by about the, about the fourth or fifth episode, season one, it really starts to get good. And then by season two, it's amazing. Um, in fact, reality, the, the, the truth is stranger than fiction. All the crazy stuff you see in that show, Silicon Valley, the reality is way crazier than that. <laughs> yeah, you've seen it too, right? Yeah, it's like, wow. <laughs> what will have to be a story for another time, unfortunately, is we've, we've been asked to wrap it up. I've got one last question from the audience. It is, what is your favorite song from the movie Three Amigos? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we'd, only, we'd only do it if, if you guys are willing to sing along. Okay. All right. So, so Jonah actually is the dancer of the three. <laughs> Um, he, he, the the three of us have been, we've been playing and singing and dancing this song since we were kids. And so we're going to do that on stage, and uh, if you guys can sing along. We'll, we'll do the first verse, and then you guys can sing along on the second verse. Okay. This is going to be real bad. <laughs> we promised that it would be terrible. Yeah, exactly. I said terrible. It's going to be terrible. I, I'm mixing the dancing thing. Oh, come on. Stay a while. Won't you stay a while? <laughs> Moonbeams meet the sky, and you and I will walk the by on by on by. Well, this is really winning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.